Hello everyone and welcome to this one shot episode where we're talking about the camera shake and how we can add camera shake to emphasize a jump and landing animation on our character. So let's get started and take a look at how this works. Okay, so to use the shake actors or assets rather, we're going to go and create the blueprint class for them first. So you go into the all classes search box and you search for the word shake. And if you go down the bottom here, you'll see camera shake base. Now, if you're doing this in Unreal Engine 4, these are actually separated a bit further out and you will want to use the sequencer base one. However, in Unreal 5 onwards, you just want to use camera shake base. Now click select and we'll name this one jump up shake. And open this up here. In the shake pattern over on the right hand side, you can change this to be one of four things. We can use a composite, a purling, a sequence, or wave oscillation. We'll be using a sequence camera shake pattern. The differences between all these three uh, and the composite is that purling noise is completely random. Sequencer is what I'm going to do now, which is more designed. And wave oscillation is, uh, it oscillates back and forth, okay, like a sine wave type thing. So we're going to be using a sequence camera shake. Oh, sorry, and composite is you can merge two of these together. So sequencer, we're going to choose that one, and you get some options now. You can expand this open, and you'll see sequence is now available and set to none. We're going to click on this where it says none, and do create new camera animation sequence. This. And it's asked you to name it and find a location for it. We're going to do jump up sequence. And before we go into it, let's talk about some of the settings that you see in here. So we've got play rate and scale. So play rate, pretty standard, what that would do. It changes the speed of how much it, how fast it plays the sequence. The scale of it is going to change the values that are inside of it. Basically, these values inside the sequence here are going to be additive to your location and rotation. So if you scale it by two, it will double the effect it has. Blending time and blend out time changes how it blends into this sequence here. And random segment, if you've got different segments inside of your thing, you can make it choose randomly different parts of it. But we're keeping it nice and simple. It's just one segment. So you can double click on this to open it up. And you'll now find it down here or somewhere else in your editor, depending on how you got it set up. But you'll see in here is the Cine Camera Actor. And if you click the little camera icon here, it'll take you to it. Now, by default, it will be spawned at 000, zero. And this is where you want to keep it. Next, we're going to go to its track. Add a new track and it would do a, a new transform. And this is where you're going to do the animation. So I'm going to go to my transform and add a key for all the keys. This is important. We want to make sure that location and, and scale are set as well at the start to be 000. So location should be 000. If it isn't, make sure it is set to 000. The rotation note is where we're doing most of our work, it's in, especially in the pitch. So if I go across and move this a few frames forward, and the trick for this is that you do want it to be quite quick. So we'll go to like frame 10 maybe. And the pitch here, we're going to make it leave the ground and point downwards. And you can see the camera change in the viewport. We're going to point it down by minus 10. I'm then going to move my playhead a little bit further forward and make it a readjust. We'll go to frame 30 and bring that to five positive five and then i'm bring it back down to 40 and change that to zero and then i'm going to change the length of my animation by just dragging the playhead down the end here so the full animation is this sort of speed now you may find that this is very very slow or very very fast depending on how you set up this up this is where that scale can come in as well. If you want to scale it to be quicker or play play rate, sorry, not scale, play rate to be quicker, you can do, um, but up to you. You can either med modify it here or inside the shake. I'm going to modify it here a little bit. I'm going to bring this key here a little bit forward. Bring this one forward. This one forward. Now you usually find that I'm doing a weighting like this, where it is a shorter weight at the front here. This is more like gut reactionary sort of motion and this is more force motion that's what you're doing by trying to rectify your animation basically so we'll put that there and now it looks like this 
Okay. Once we're happy with that, we can come out of there by hitting a little eject button. And we can now go back to our player character. And in our character's jump, we're going to go for the jump here and we're going to drag in a, uh, sorry, not drag in, we're going to right click, do get player character uh, controller. And from the controller, we're going to do play, uh, no, not play, um, stop his shake, and you'll see it. There you go. Client start camera shake. You can either do it like this or you can have a component on here too, which is a shake component, same sort of thing. Um, but this will do just fine for us. We shake. And we're from the drop down, we're going to choose our jump up shake. All the rest of this we can leave alone. That's how we want it to be. So now, when I go in and push play, and now when I jump, we have this cool animation every time we jump, which makes it feel a little bit more realistic, a little bit more dynamic, like so. And the same can be done for also when we land as well. So let's go ahead and do the landed one. And it works exactly the same way. So I'm going to do another different class. I'm going to search for shake. I'm going to choose a camera shake base. Select landed shake. Open this up and change this to a sequence. And I'm going to create a new animation sequence. And this one will be landed sequence. File and open this one up and now we've got a new one up here and again we're going to click on the little camera so we see what we're doing and then we're going to add the track for the transform and this is going to simulate it landing on the floor so we're going to be looking down and then bring our camera back up so hit the keyframe for the start so we'll set the zero go open up rotation and going to move it along here change the pitch here to minus 15 Maybe a bit more than that, minus 20. And then we're going to revert back up a little bit to zero. Obviously, all these numbers and how you animate this is totally up to you based on the kind of character that you're designing here. But there we go. So when I land, it goes like that. And we can either do like a little head bob too as well instead of like making it move the pitch too much. So we go make Maybe, maybe make the pitch minus 10 instead, but we'll go to location here and we'll just change the height a little bit too. So the height will just go down a little bit. Do minus six, and then bring that back up to zero. Like that. Yeah, we're gonna come out of there and we can go back to our player character. And we're going to go on to the on landed event. And when we do this, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did over here. So we can copy this out and do that. And if you really wanted to as well, you can change the scale of it based upon how hard they hit the floor too. So if you want to get the velocity of it, you can multiply it by that to get some sort of algorithm, get the scale of it, and make it do harsher animation based upon how hard they jumped. So you can do some extra cool stuff with that. Um, but we're going to change that to landed, hit compile and save that, and that'll do. So now, got a jump up animation that's wobbling the camera, and now, and I land as well. And obviously, all these numbers can be tweaked, reconfigured as much as you like, uh, not just inside the sequencer, but also inside of the shake themselves as well. So, for example, changing the blend in times and blend out times, making it a bit more snappier, you're more than welcome to mess about with that too. Anything like that, you can really do mess about with. And if you want to make it so that the landed is more violent when you land heavier, just get the velocity of the character when they are landing. So you get the velocity. And I always recommend you do get velocity first and then get vector length. Um, and print string that first of all before you do plug anything in, just so you know what kind of numbers you're printing out, um, you know what kind of things you're working with. So for example, a standard jump is 429 roughly, yeah? But if I'm running, 737, okay? Uh, if I jump from a height, 
977. Yeah. So you can kind of see the numbers you kind of get with, you know what to work with. Um, so in this case, we're going to make it so that if we divide this vector length here by uh, 500, okay. So if it's less than 500, it'd be a, a weaker jump. If it is greater than 500, it'll be a stronger jump. Okay. So we could do things like that to make it more interesting when we land. So let's do that. So, a bit subtle. If I jump off here, I do a bit of comparison. Jump. So we look at the landed animation there. But actually, let me take off the jump, the the jump up, so you can see it a bit clearer. Let's turn that one off. Okay. Jump. Okay, that's standard. Let's get up here. Okay, that's standard. Yep. And if I jump off here. It will look a lot more scaled up and doing a bit more violent stuff. Yeah. If I'm running around, it'll be higher. I'll jump a little bit, it'll be like that. Yeah. And you can do whatever sort of calculation you want to work out that scale value, but that'll work just fine for this. Yeah. But by me, just play around with it. See what kind of a cool effect you can do to make some interesting jumping mechanics for your games and get that more realistic jumping feel for your first person character. And there we have it, you've now got a nice way to characterize your character's jumping and landing animations, make it emphasize that sort of movement that they're going in first person. If you want to watch more of my videos early before everyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all the Patreon members and the YouTube members for their continued support in helping this channel thrive as it is. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.